Hello, sewing friends. Rhonda Pierce here, representing Smets Home Sewing Machine Needles in North America. And I welcome you to my April Smets Snippet Live. I'm here in the Chicago area in, um, in our conference room, surrounded by the unicorn quilt that you can see behind me and the eight foot Smets color chart <laughs> and some wonderful samples behind me. So as you come on board, tell me where you're at, uh, what city or state or country you're um, joining us from. And um, yeah, tell me what your favorite um, sewing project is right now. Tell me what you're sewing or quilting. What What is your creative project right now? So I see Marianne is here from Georgia. Lisa is here. Gail is here. Lori. Boy, I'd like to know what part of the world you're from. So feel free and just maybe tell us um, your state, et cetera, and tell us what you're sewing on. Um, right now, I'm not sewing on anything. I've got projects in my mind, but um, yeah, I really need some uh, sit down time <laughs> to, um, to, to sew. Okay, let's see. We got a few more people coming on board. So again, uh, my name is Rhonda Pierce and I'm here in the Chicago area where let's see, we've got a little bit of snow. We've got a little bit of rain. It's cold and um, windy outside. So you know what? I say it's great sewing weather. <laughs> Anytime it's snowy or rainy or uh, maybe too hot to be outside, I say it's great sewing weather. Okay, we've got people coming on. All right. So last month, um, I think I was live here in the Chicago area again. And um, the winner of the Smith Snippet March uh, giveaway was Marie from Jupiter, Florida. So Marie got lots of goodies. Um, she had to answer the question, uh, why do you sew? And her reply it was that she likes to sew because it's cheaper than therapy. So isn't that true for a lot of us? And, well, I think I need to go on a sewing marathon right now. <laughs> Anybody else feel that way? <laughs> okay, Sandy. Oh, Sandy's here from Iowa. Jerry. Oh, goodness, Jerry. She made it from Washington State. <laughs> Pat is here from Pennsylvania. Uh, Lisa from Wisconsin. So welcome to, to everyone. Okay, so um, to be part of today's random giveaway, you have to answer a question. And Paul is in the other room and he'll um, be arranging a winner, which will be announced at the end of today's seg segment. So in order to be considered in today's uh, giveaway, you have to answer this question. What's your favorite sewing or quilting website and why? Do you visit the sewing and quilt um, website to shop? Are you looking for inspiration? Um, are you looking for new techniques? Maybe you're looking for expert to upgrade your um, sewing or stitching experiences. What's your inspiration for visiting um, your favorite sewing and quilt uh, website? So um, you'll need to put a reply in the little chat and Paul will arrange a winner um, in the next 30 or so minutes. Okay, so I'm here in the Chicago area, and uh, wow, what a month March was. Uh, yeah, I really got a lot of frequent flyer miles. <laughs> First, I was in Puyallup, Washington for the awesome Sewing and Stitchery Expo. Hello, Jerry. <laughs> I always see Jerry the Princess in Puyallup, and that's always a joy. Um, then I was in uh, um, Tampa, Florida for the... Um, uh, original Sewing and Quilt Expo. I was in the Atlanta area again for Original Sewing and Quilt Expo. And then, wow, my bonus trip was going to Germany for the H&H &H Cologne Show, which is not a consumer show. It's um, a wholesale show. And let me just tell you, that show blew me away. H&H &H Cologne. Um, it took place in three expo halls on three different levels. Levels. And unlike, um, unlike exhibitors that I'm used to here in the States, exhibitors in Cologne had these massive um, 
uh, 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 exhibits where they had to bring in carpenters <laughs> to set up the, um, the booths and tables, et cetera. So it was really, um, really mind boggling. At H&H &H Cologne, there were 12,000 attendees. Those were, um, those were wholesale buyers from um, around the world. Um, the, the exhibitors came from 78 countries and there were over um, 300 exhibitors. So, um, wow, it was massive. And then uh, one of my Smets Germany colleagues suggested, hey, Rhonda, there's a consumer show going on at the same time. Why don't you take the train uh, to Dortmund? Um, it's about an hour away from Cologne. And um, so, gosh, what do I know? It's been, oh, quite some time over, oh, maybe at least a dozen years since I've been in Germany. So I went to um, the, a consumer show and they described it as um, a little consumer show. <laughs> oh, blow my mind. <laughs> um, this consumer show called Creativa, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. It's spelled C-R-E-A-T-I-V-A. So it's like creative, but ending in A.com. You can go and check out. Uh, this consumer show had 65,000 attendees. <laughs> Shoppers, consumers, 65,000 um, attendees over five days. And not only that, it was in six expo halls. So one expo hall was targeting textiles and fibers. Another expo was targeting um, drawing and painting. Another expo hall for gardening. Another one for baking and cooking, etc. Another one for puzzles and games. It blew me away. <laughs> so 65,000 attendees. And on that first day, I got there about 30 minutes after opening time. And again, I was blown away by how massive the, this show was. Um, so around lunchtime, I went to the second floor where they had a little cafe for sandwiches and coffee and tea. And you could look down onto the um, exhibit hall, one of the expo halls, and already by noon, it was elbow to elbow people. So um, the odd thing is I didn't buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> there were lots of temptations, but I didn't buy in anything. And they had really fantastic um, uh, handcrafted shoes that I really wanted. But um, yeah, I was traveling with just one small suitcase. So um, if you have a chance to go to Creativa in Dortmund, um, Germany, I strongly recommend it again for um, that show and also the H&H &H Wholesale show. Um, I just was unprepared for the magnitude of both of those shows. So getting around Germany, I didn't have any problem. Um, I was the first time for me to use my global entry card. So that worked lickety split. So if you're going to be traveling internationally, I strongly suggest that you get that. Um, I got mine in January and uh, here used it in March. So um, it, I think it I think I first applied in August or September. So it does take some time and it's especially takes time. Once you get that uh, written approval, it takes time to get the in-person um, interview. And I think some of those in-person interviews can actually be online now. So you'd have to check on that. So um, you've got, um, so I hope some of you will be traveling um, this year. Okay, so that's, um, oh, yes. And when I stepped out of the um, train station, so I flew into Frankfurt and then took a train. And by the way, Jill Reap, who um, represents June Taylor for um, AccuQuilt, we we're on the same flight. Uh, we didn't know that until the when we, we landed. So we took the train together back um, into Cologne. When we stepped out of the Cologne um, train station, oh my gosh, it's like, has anybody read um, Pillars of Pillars of the Earth, Pillars of the World, the Tom, the um, Ken Fowler um, book, the um, the series? 
which takes place, you know, like, I don't know, 12th century, something like that. And Tom the Builder is building these mass, this massive um, cathedral. And I walked out and that's all I could think about was Tom the Builder building this massive cathedral. Um, my hotel was just five minutes from the Rhine River. In fact, see it from my my room and um gosh also within five minutes walking time was the um chocolate factory or chocolate museum <laughs> so on my arrival day i actually took some time and went to the chocolate museum and did um a walk through um I'll, i was a little intimidated because it must have been spring break in germany too because wow there were just hundreds and hundreds of groups of <laughs> kids there. But I said, you know what? I may not make it again. I just better do it. So so I did. I took that tour. It was probably like 45 minutes. Very interesting. Um, I enjoyed that. And at the end, they had a three-foot um, chocolate fountain where they would dip um, a wafer in and you could have um, some chocolate. And so, of course, I brought chocolates back to the office. Um, I brought, they had a fantastic chocolate um, store. So I brought back this tin. I opened it up yesterday for the guys here in the office. And hmm, let's see, there's five chocolates left. <laughs> I'm pretty sure these will be gone before the end of today. <laughs> I might have one as soon as we finish here today. Okay. So where, again, where am I going to be in April? Well, um, next week, I'm going to be in the Chicago area. I'm giving an in-person lecture at the uh, Fine Line Creative Arts Center, which I've visited a few times. It's probably like an hour uh, from my office here. It's um, in St. Charles, um, Illinois, and they have all kinds of wonderful um, exhibits. Some are painting, some are fibers, etc. And they've got a series of sewing and quilting classes. So I'm going in to uh, give a lecture lecture on, um, you know, the most essential two inch piece of steel in your sewing machine, the Smith's needle. And then um, April 18th to the 20th, I'll be in the Cleveland area for Original Sewing and Quilt Expo. So I'll be giving um, two lectures, one on one on Thursday afternoon at four and then Friday morning at nine o'clock. And I'll be with Pins and Needles um, out of Middle Middleburg Heights, Ohio. They'll have a booth there um, at Original Sewing and Quilt Expo. So if you live in the Cleveland area, come on by, sign up for my in-person class and come by their booth, um, the Pins and Needles booth to um, say hello. So while I was traveling, um, uh, well, a lot was happening. <laughs> I got all kinds of notices. So um, did you see the notice that um, I was interviewed in January by Threads Magazine? So their podcast went live in um, a few weeks ago. So I didn't even know about it. And I'm getting little notes from people saying, hello, Rhonda, thanks. I really enjoyed, I enjoyed and learned a lot from your Threads podcast. So be sure to um, go in and like, listen and like to it. And then I found out that, um, let's see, last September, uh, my Smets class was filmed by Wisconsin PBS. So they made clips of it for a promotion of 2024 um, Great Wisconsin Quilt Show, which is again taking place in September in Madison, Wisconsin. So that little promo went live and I'm sorry, I haven't seen it yet, but um, I know some of you have, and you've, you've sent really nice comments, so you can listen to that. Uh, let me see what else. Oh, 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 I know. Um, Judy, many of you are Judy fans, Judy of Fit Nice. So she's had this ongoing series um, that started last year with the Alphabet series where she, um, you're making different tops with different techniques and you're using a master um, pattern that you just alter. And uh, so I'll see Judy, I'll see Judy in Cleveland in, in a couple of weeks. And then yesterday, what came in the mail? Quick and easy quilts. Guess what? <laughs> I'm quoted. <laughs> 
So that's on page 22, and we also have a full page Smets um, ad there, but I talk about um, the color coding of the system and what those numbers mean on the um, the little Smets needle pack. So you can um, take, a, take a look at that. That should be out on the newsstands right now. So I know you have a lot of questions, but before I get to those questions that you posted in Facebook, and they were really terrific questions, so thank you, I want to talk about um, some of the new needles that we have, because, you know, needles don't really change that much, so when they do, yeah, I get excited. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to walk through a couple new needles that are newly available um, and you'll start some of these you might see in your local sewing machine dealer right now. You're not going to find them in the big box stores, um, but you'll find them at your local sewing machine dealer and at some of your fabric and quilt shops. So one is a new top stitch twin needle twin top stitch so you've got two like needles two top stitch needles um, with um, on a single shank so you can make parallel stitch lines um, for hemming or for embellishing um, many of you know that the top stitch needle has an elongated eye an elongated eye so there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle so i would use this for echo quilting i would use this for hemming some of your um your tops and dresses um etc and again for embellishing um embellished stitches this needle um, the top stitch twin will come two ways a 2.5, which means um, there's 2.5 millimeters between the two needles, um, size 80 needle. And then there's a wider one also, which is um, a 3.0 in a size 90 needle. So again, you're going to see these very, very soon um, at your local sewing machine dealer. So if you get these and you um, you use them, um, send me some pictures of your, your samples. I'd like to see how you're using your top stitch twin. Speaking of top stitch, we have the top stitch gold. Top stitch gold. Now these were out earlier, but um, I still consider these brand new. They came out um, earlier in the year. Uh, top stitch gold. Gold for titanium. Go, uh, the titanium gives extra strength to your needle and the titanium will also help the thread to glide easier and smoother through the eye of your needle. But top stitch um, titanium um, is good when you're looking for extra strength. Um, maybe you're going through denser fabric. So this needle is available in two sizes, the size 9014 and the larger size uh, 100 slash 16. Um, uh, yeah, so you can use these on some of the totes and canvas bags that you're making, um, certainly when you're working with heavier fabrics and for embellishing on some of your um, denser fabrics. So this is the Top Stitch Gold in two sizes, 90, 14, and 100 slash 16, and probably at the end of the month, you'll also see a combo pack with the two sizes, 8012 and 9014. I was thinking they might arrive today because I know the warehouse, and I don't know if you can hear them right now, but our warehouse is receiving six pallets of uh, Smets needles. So that new assorted um, uh, top stitch might be on there. We'll see. Okay. Uh, Smets Gold Jeans. Yes, this one's been out there for a couple months. Uh, you probably already know about it, and some of you are already using it. Again, the titanium gives extra strength to the needle. Plus, as you may know, the jeans needle has that um, optimized blade, a reinforced blade, so there's less needle deflection when your stitch is made. And I know that a lot of you are already using this on some of your um, tote bags 
bags and canvas bags. I know some of you have sent me pictures of biani projects that you've made. Um, I used, um, when this needle first came out, I used it on the um, some nylon strapping. I used the size 100 slash 16 on nylon strapping and it worked beautifully. So again, that titanium, it's just another choice for you. It gives extra strength to your needle and the thread um, uh, transitions beautifully through the uh, titanium eye. And last but not least, and I know some of you are using this needle already too, is the Black Super Fine. And I'm really excited about this needle. Black for the um, non-stick surface. And can you kind of, you might be able to kind of see, it's kind of a gunmetal color. So you know that we have the super non-stick, super universal. And this needle here is even finer. So if you're doing embroidery um, on um, a fine fabric, this would be a great needle to use. Or maybe if you're just sewing on more delicate fabrics, whether they're knit or woven, the super fine would be a great needle to use. So um, yeah, all these needles you can find at your local sewing machine dealer. Um, and some of your quilt and fabric stores. And of course, um, they're all over at um, smetsneedles.com. So give them a try. <laughs> And actually, you know, Mother's Day is coming up and I was thinking, oh, you know what, maybe I'll put together a pack of new needles, um, new Smets needles for some of you um, to try if you're um, interested in experimenting with some of the new needles. So if you like that idea, let me know. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> I'll be looking at your comments. I'll read each and every comment when we're done. Um, so for Mother's Day, if you've got an idea of what you'd like to see um, in a Smets needle collection for Mother's Day, go ahead and put that um, in the comment. Many of you also bought that um, at Christmas time, the Little Smets tin. Oh, I don't, I don't have it here with me. Um, it's about, it was about this small and nice and thin, and it says I love smetsneedles.com. Well, we were able to get a few more of those, so I thought, oh, you know, without the chocolate. <laughs> so I thought, oh, you know what? Um, I've got about a hundred of those tens, so maybe I'll use that tin for some of the Mother's Day. So um, if you've got an idea for Mother's Day um, needle selections, go ahead and put that in, in the chat. Okay, so let me go through... Um, Let's see. Do I want to do Q&A first? No. You know what? I'm going to show you what today's giveaway is, and then I'm going to go through the um, Q&A. So again, to win today's um, uh, giveaway, random giveaway, you have to answer what's your favorite sewing and quilting website and why? Is it for inspiration? Is it fun? Is it for shopping? Is it for techniques? There's no right or wrong answer. Just curious. What's your favorite sewing and quilting um, websites? Okay, so uh, answer that, and then um, the all these things will be in the giveaway. Well, you know I'm a huge fan of Shannon Fabric, so these are shades of pink. This is called the Wine in a Million, Wine in a Million uh, Cuddle Kit. So it's got eight pre-cut 10-inch uh, strips for the quilt top binding and um, the pattern, too. So we know that Shannon makes the world a softer place. And there's a picture of what that um, what this kit makes. And for those of you that are using um, Cuddle Fabric, what needle do you use? Smet Stretch 9014. Stretch 9014. So keep that in mind. Um, also, fabric, I've got some wonderful fat quarters here from Northcott. Um, I love, well, wow, these are kind of wine colored too. They, they go with the cuddle fabric. So I've got a couple cuts of the uh, Northcott, which will be fun. I have a wonderful thread. I've got a collection of five. Yep. Five different uh, sample spools of the wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful thread. How's that? <laughs> Mary Malari has uh, her hipster apron. Always love Mary's um, 
aprons. And I'm going to see Mary, I think, in a couple of weeks here in the Chicago area. So I'm excited for that. I've got Quilt Tony's um, Fantasy Mermaid. Maybe some of your youngsters like um, or maybe someone that's learning to sew will enjoy doing this digital um, uh, mermaid. We've got our needle travel guide. So if you're planning shop hops um, throughout the year, this is a great reference for where to find your fabrics, threads, yarns, et cetera, throughout um, the country. Threads Magazine. Let's see why. Oh, let's see. Threads Magazine. Why did I earmark this? Oh, yes. I earmarked it. Yeah, we have a full page. We have an ad in here. I I um, I tagged it because <laughs> there's a grab it, um, a teal grab it uh, magnetic pin cushion in this picture. So that was uh, totally unplanned. That was, um, you know, I'm always happy to see people use grab it magnetic pin cushion. So when I see a picture in any advertising, I want to want to grab it and share it. Um, well, let's see. What was it? Oh, the other thing I liked um, in this Threads magazine was um, their column called Moving the Needle, and it had all these little antique hand needle cases. Do you remember these? I bet some of you still have some of these little antique um, hand needle uh, cases. I know I certainly do, you know, from grandma and from my mom, etc. So don't, don't get rid of those, but share your love of sewing with, um, with someone. Um, I've got the quilt maker magazine and also the uh, love of quilting magazine um, in today's giveaway. From our friend Amy Berrickman, I've got the treasured threads. You know, Amy is always so clever and she's got this clever way to um, embellish your um, jean jackets and clothes and quilts, et cetera, using these um, special printed um, little um, fabrics here. Our friends at Clover, and yes, I saw um, my friend John at um, in Germany. And let's see, this is a fabric tube maker, so. Clover is always so very clever. From Grab It Sewing Tools, well, we've got the bobbin savers. We've got the jumbo for your jumbo bobbins. We've got the regular for your regular bobbins. And there's also a uh, Grab It um, My Pad needle organizer for your slightly used needles. And, oh, here. I've got Taylor Seville. Um, this is, this is... Oh, let's see. What is this? Oh, this is very clever. This eliminates frayed or raw thread ends and prevents unraveling. So there's like a little wire here. So I'm going to guess that um, um, it gets really hot so it can solder your fibers together. So very clever. And I'm just looking at the warning here. It says, do not use in the presence of flammable gases. <laughs> How many of you sew with flammable gases? <laughs> okay, so keep that in mind. Also from Smets, um, I've got a whole collection of uh, needles in our product um, project uh, card. So for costuming, for general sewing, sewing with knits, uh, piecing and quilting, etc. So lots of um, needles here. Who wants to win this? I know I do. <laughs> I'd love to have that Shannon fabric cuddle blanket. <laughs> okay, so to win um, the giveaway, you must answer what's your favorite sewing or quilting website and why? Is it for inspiration? Is it for shopping? Is it for fun? Is it for technique? Okay, so the we'll have the the uh, Paul will have the uh, winner late um, in a in a few minutes. All right, so you asked really great questions on Facebook, and I um, appreciate that. So, in random order, let me um, go through the list. Um, Diane was asking, "What needles do you recommend for sewing clear vinyl?" And the super nonstick, su Smet super nonstick, uh, super universal is what I would rec is what I recommend for sewing on vinyl. She also asked, what are your top options for piecing cotton fabrics for um, a quilt top? Well, for um, uh, 
uh, piecing quilts, you've got all kinds of options. You can certainly use the universal needle. I probably use universal size 8012 for, for piecing of um, a project. If you're working with um, heavier of uh, fabrics, maybe even flannels, I might use the universal or a jeans needle, which has that uh, reinforced blade. Other options for piecing quilt tops would be um, the top stitch needle, which has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. You could use the quilting needle, uh, which comes in two sizes. The quilting needle is, is specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. I would use the smaller size 7511 for the piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. And last but not least is the Microtex needle, generically known as a sharp needle. The Microtex needle has a very slim acute point. So with the Microtex, you get really clean, precise stitches. So if you're looking for precision stitches, go with the Microtex. And again, because that Microtex has that very slim acute point, guess what? it's going to dull quicker than any other um, needle type. So you'll need to replace it. Which brings us to Jerry's question. In all seriousness, how often should you change the needle? <laughs> Jerry has a tendency to wait until the needle breaks. Well, um, and she's sewing on cotton. Well, Jerry, I'm going to suggest that you reframe that question from how often should you change the needle to... What are the clues to changing the needle? So what are the clues? Yeah, when your needle breaks, that's definitely a clue. But don't wait that long because you can really elevate the quality of your stitches just by changing out your needle. So um, when you're sewing, how do you know when to change out the needle? Well, what's happening to your threads? Are your threads breaking and shredding? Hey, that's a clue that you need to change out your needle. When you're sewing, what's happening to your fabric? Is your fabric puckering? Is your fabric snagging? Or in a really bad case, the needle hits the fabric and it tucks the fabric into your throat plate. Hello? That's a clue. You need to change out your needle. What's happening um, to your stitches? Are your stitches uneven? Are your stitches skipping? Or um, maybe you're sewing along and you're going, well, my stitches are kind of wiggly squiggly. Well, guess what? Your needle is dull. So what are you going to do? Change out your needle. And last but not least is use your ears. Um, if your needle is making a little click, click, clicking sound, that's a clue. Your needle is saying, hey, I've been work working hard here. Change me. <laughs> if it graduates to a, um, a pop, pop, popping sound, now your needle is yelling at you, change me, change me. And if your needle is going clunk, 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 hello, it's begging you, change me, change me. <laughs> so um, I'm not here just to sell you more needles, but really you spend a lot of time and money um, uh, sewing. So let's just change out that needle and elevate your stitches. So good question, Jerry. Thank you. And I'm sure you're not the only one that was asking. So Karen is asking, um, is there a titanium de denim needle? And yes, there is. I just mentioned that. Um, that would be the Smets Gold Jeans needle available in two sizes, 9014 and 100. Um, and 16. So two different sizes. Again, the titanium gives extra strength to the needle. The jeans needle is already um, a strong needle. It has that reinforced blade, an optimized blade. So when the stitch um, is created, there's less movement of the needle with that jeans needle and the reinforced blade. So um, jeans, gold jeans, hey, Use it when you're working with denser fabrics or heavier fabrics. Use it on uh, bags and sa sails and purses and totes, etc. So Smets um, gold jeans. Uh, Diana is asking, uh, what needle do you recommend for sewing batik rayons? 
batik rayons. And I use either a universal or a microtech. So either of those needles, I'd probably first reach for the microtex again for that um, precision. Again, the microtex um, has that very slim acute point. And even when you pre-wash your batik fabrics, oftentimes they're still tightly woven and may have some dye residue. And that microtex can just stitch through um, your batik fabric beautifully. So my first recommendation for batik rayon is a microtex followed by universal. So see which um, works best, better for you. Um, Annette says she has chrome top stitch needles. Would gold be better or, and if so, in which ways? Well, again, with Smets, you have options. So um, chrome um, is available now in the top stitch in the two sizes, the sizes um, 80, 90, the 80, 12, and 90, 14. Um, if you're working with a denser or heavier fabric, I would suggest the, um, the gold. Um, again, the top stitch has that elongated eye, whether it's a chrome or um, a titanium needle. The extra um, long eye or elongated eye means there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So um, again, sometimes our machines have personalities. Try that, um, that gold, gold top stitch. If you like it, go for it. Um, maybe if your machine doesn't really like the titanium, then go back to your traditional top stitch chrome needle. So again, see what works for you. You know, our fabrics aren't like fabrics of days past where you had just a couple um, um, cotton manufacturers or just a couple knit manufacturers. Now there's a plethora of manufacturers. They're using all kinds of fibers and all kinds of manufacturing techniques. So um, you need to test. There's no um, needle police, so find what works for you. Um, Maria is asking, what's the best needle for sewing faux leather? Faux leather. And my first inclination is the leather needle, especially if it's a medium or heavy weight leather, um, you want to use the leather needle. The leather needle has a cutting um, blade or a cutting um, point. So that's why you want the leather needle. Um, if it's a lighter weight uh, faux leather, um, you might be able to use a universal needle, or maybe even the super nonstick needle. So you've got a couple choices. For sewing faux leather, you've got the leather, the universal, or the super nonstick. Maria also asks, uh, what needle to use for waterproof um, canvas? And you know what I'd use? I'd use that super nonstick needle. For waterproof canvas, I'm guessing you need at least a size 9014. If it's even heavier, I would jump up to a size 100 slash 16. So waterproof canvas, um, I would use the super nonstick, which reminds me, um, the... Um, Splash fabric is a waterproof fabric. And for that, I always suggest the super nonstick um, in size 8012. I know some of you like to use the size 9014. So you've got some choices and uh, experimentation to do. Uh, oh, Lynette asked about sewing on faux leather too. So again, the choices, um, depending on the weight of the uh, faux leather, if it's medium to heavy weight, I'd probably use um, just a regular leather needle. If it's a lighter weight faux leather, I'd probably use either a universal or a um, super nonstick. Okay. Um, um, uh, Paya, Paya or Pia, I'm not sure how to um, pronounce your name, so I'm sorry. Um, can I use top stitch needles for my quilt top or other fabrics? They're so much easier to thread. Absolutely. When I talk about five favorite needle types for piecing and quilting, top stitch is definitely one of them. Again, the top stitch needle has an elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. And 
the top stitch needle also is easier to thread. So um, other choices for piecing and quilting would be universal jeans, quilting, and the micro text, but and certainly the top stitch also. So good question. Pam is asking which needle, which machine needles have the largest eyes? Well, okay. Uh, the embroidery needle has the widest eye. The embroidery, whether it's a chrome or a titanium, the embroidery needle has the widest eye. The super nonstick also has a wide eye. The super nonstick has a super nonstick, super universal has a wide eye. And then um, the top stitch and the metallic have that elongated eye, elongated. So you've got wide eyes and you've got elongated eyes. So the elongated eyes are the metallic and the top stitch and the wider eyes would be the embroidery and the super nonstick, super universal needle. Um, Denise says that she's sewing through seatbelt webbing onto impact screen. Um, she's going to, she's thinking she's going to use nylon thread. What would be the best needle to use? I'd use that, um, the gold jeans needle. That's what I would use because, um, I have sewn through webbing, um, uh, with the gold jeans. I use the size 100 slash 16 and it's stitched beautifully. Um, gold jeans. 100 slash 16. If it's a little bit uh, lighter weight, then I would go with the size 9014. So um, you might try the super nonstick, especially like the size 100 and see how that works too. Uh, Karen asks, what needle and thread weight is recommended for sewing flannel and fleece? Okay. So, um, so um, let me give you my rule of thumb. <laughs> For everyday sewing, um, and that could be piecing also, I use generally use a 40 weight thread. Doesn't matter what the brand is, I use a 40 weight thread. And for 40 weight thread, I generally use a size 8012 needle. Now, if I'm going to be working with a thread that is heavier than a 40 weight, then I know I need to move up a needle size or two to 9014 or maybe a size 100, depending on the weight of the thread. So again, my benchmark is a 40 weight thread and an 8012 needle. So now if you're going to be working with a finer weight thread, now you know you need a smaller needle, something smaller than an 8012, maybe a 7010, or if you're using some of those micro threads, a 64. Five. So sometimes you just have to um, test. So sewing flannel, oh, I probably use a, um, a universal or maybe a um, uh, universal or a, um, a micro text, depending on how many layers I'm going through. If I'm going through a lot of layers of flannel, I might use that jeans needle. Again, the jeans needle with um, the reinforced um, blade. So uh, keep that in mind. So um, sewing on fleece. Well, I'm guessing uh, for fleece, you're talking about like polar fleece or cuddle fabric. The cuddle, which would be a stretchy fabric um, and or um, the polar fleece. And that stretch 9014 is what I recommend for sewing on your, your fleece because that fabric has some stretch and the stretch needle actually has a smaller eye and a deeper scarf. So um, um, the needle can grab that upper thread in order to create the stitch. Okay, Jennifer, Jennifer's asking, what's the best needle to use for tool? Tool, you know what? I'd use just a plain old universal needle, the workhorse of all needle types. If it's a stretchy tool, I might use the universal or I'll try the, un, uh, the jersey needle. So again, um, when you're working with a stretchy fabric, you're going to use either the stretch or jersey um, needle. Um, for tool, I don't know if it's just a stable tool or a stretch. So if it's stable, I'd use a universal. I might use universal if that tool has some stretch um, also. 
Uh, Charlene is asking, what's the best needle uh, for sergers? Well, you need to know your machine. <laughs> um, you need to do a little bit of research. So Charlene, what I want you to do is um, look at your serger and I want you to open that front cover of your serger and inside it should give a needle system. It might say ELX705 or ELX705CF, CF for chrome finish. Um, ELX705 um, is a special needle for sergers, for specific um, sergers and for specific um, stitches. So sometimes on your sergers, you can use a regular home sewing machine. I know on my serger, um, when I open up that cover, it says use ELX705. But I know from my serger friends, serger expert friends like Gail Yellen, um, that I can sometimes use a regular home sewing machine needle. So I might use a universal or a top stitch or a jeans um, or a stretch, et cetera. But when my stitches start to go wonky, uh, with a home sewing machine needle, then I'll do what the manufacturer suggests. And I will use that ELX705. ELX705 is like a regular home sewing machine needle. It has a groove on the front of the needle, but it has a second groove on the back of the needle, which is needed for some of the specific serger um, stitches. So be aware of that. So what I suggest you do is talk to your... Um, your serger dealer and find out. Again, um, now I will tell you on my serger, and I have a baby lock serger that's, uh, ooh, I don't think it's 10 years old yet. It says use ELX705, um, but I can use a regular home sewing machine needle, and I do. And when I have problems, then I'll switch to ELX705. I will tell you, I tested the super nonstick on my serger and it did not work at all. So don't be afraid to um, test. Uh, you need to be, you need to know about your serger and its personalities and its quirks um, and its strengths. So um, um, if you don't have a dealer for your serger machine, then you need to go online and Google your specific make and model of the serger and find the instruction booklet. Um, there are companies out there that have the instruction booklets for sale, but don't do it. You can find the information generally from the uh, manufacturer site. You can find the owner's manual and you'll have to sometimes dig for the needle system um, that that particular machine uses. So I hope that um, helps. It depends, um, uh, Charlene, on what serger make and model you've got. Catherine says that she um, bought needles 30 years ago. Smith's needles 30 years ago. Do they have a shelf life? <laughs> If you have protected your needles from moisture and from dust, Catherine, use those needles. The Smets needles are made from German steel. They're not going to rust unless they've been exposed to moisture and dust. So I know I at home, I inherited some Smets needles that are quite old. And you know what? I use them. Um, because they were well cared for. So unlike threads that and fabrics that deteriorate over time, that German steel is just going to maintain its point, the tip, the shank, um, the eye, et cetera. So go ahead and use those. But if they're 30 years old, I'm going to guess they're not color coded. <laughs> <laughs> so once you take them out of the package, you need to remember uh, what needle type and size it is. Use the little grab at my pad uh, with the little flower head pin to identify the needle that's currently in your machine. You can just slide the, um, the flower head pin into the appropriate needle type and size so you don't have to rely on your memory. Just saying. <laughs> okay, um, next question. Oh, Joanne, what's the best needle for sewing um, batik? 
um, batiks. Um, yeah, batiks oftentimes, I hit upon it a little bit earlier, batiks oftentimes are a little bit more densely woven. So that microtex um, works beautifully on your batik fabrics. Even after you pre-wash, your batik fabrics are still tightly woven and can have that dye, um, dye residue, but the uh, Microtex has that very slim, acute point, so it's just going to make a clean stitch through your batiks. When I sew on batiks, I usually use Microtex 8012. So if it's um, a heavier batik, then you might want to go up to the 9014, but generally 8012 works for me. Um, Shelly is asking the difference between gold titanium and chrome. Okay. And which lasts longer? <laughs> it's a good question, Cindy. Thank you for asking. So um, all of the needles are chrome. All of your regular um, needles with that silver finish are now chrome. All of the needles rolled over from a nickel finish to chrome um, right before the pandemic. So 2019, 2020 is when all of the needles um, rolled over to chrome. Chrome resists heat and wear. Um, and yes, you can get uh, probably a little bit more sewing time with your chrome needle. Titanium, titanium or the gold, like the gold jeans needle or the gold embroidery or the gold top stitch gives the titanium gives extra strength to your needle, extra strength. And it will the titanium coating will also help to keep the needle cooler while you're stitching, especially if you're stitching fast. So there's less resistance to the thread passing through um the titanium eye, just like the chrome. So, but ti uh, titanium gives extra strength to your needle. So, um, yeah, so with Smets, you do have options. Give those gold um, um, top stitch and the jeans needle a try. Some of you are going to like them, and maybe some of your machines will like the regular chrome better. So, how long does a needle last? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you will probably get more stitching time with chrome and the um the titanium, but again, be aware of the clues to changing out your needle. Okay. Clovis, Clovis asked the needle, what needle to use when sewing with cuddle fabric? So cuddle fabric that we've talked about a couple times. You know I love cuddle fabrics and the stretch 9014. So even Shannon Fabrics that manufactures the cuddle fabrics suggests Smet stretch 9014. And you know what? That stretch needle really does make a difference when you're sewing on cuddle fabric. If you've not sewn on cuddle fabric before, you need to be very aggressive in your pinning and um, um, use that stretch needle. Okay. Anita. Now, Anita's asking about sewing on silky type fishing shirts. I have to tell you, Anita, fishing shirts, fishing shirts are out of my, <laughs> out of my, um, out of my circle. So I'm not really sure um, fishing, silky type. So I'm not quite sure what that would be. My first inclination was um, a microtex needle, silk fishy, um, fishing shirt. So I'm thinking a microtex. If you're going to be working with um, a stabilizer, like maybe in order to um, get a better stitch, you need to um, use a fusible stabilizer um, underneath your stitches so they're not uh, wonky. You might consider, um, again, the microtex or the finest um, super nonstick, the super nonstick. Try that black um, super fine needle or try the black uh, size 70 super universal super nonstick. So uh, silky type fishing shirt. Yeah, that, that threw me for a loop. <laughs> uh, again, um, not knowing specifically what that is, I'm going to suggest um, microtex or um, the super uh, super nonstick or the black super fine needle. 
Let me know how that works out. I know Anita's a regular viewer, so let me know how that works out. Uh, Deborah, this is our last question, and I've got like seven minutes left. Deborah's asking, what's the best needle for embroidering on vinyl? And that super, um, super nonstick, super universal needle is the needle of choice anytime you're working with um uh, with vinyl, and that includes embroidery. That super nonstick needle um, has the um, enlarged eye. Super nonstick, super universal has um, oh, a super large eye. Again, so there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So thank you to each of you for asking questions. They were really fantastic. Oh, you know, I forgot to look at my calendar to see Oh, I think next month, the first Wednesday of the month, is that May 1st? I think, let me look at my calendar here. I think, let me look at April, May. Okay, so that um, that is May 1st. And so I will be at the H&H America show at Rosemont Convention Center in the Chicago area. So um, I hope to have some special guests with me on that day. So um, you don't have to just listen to me, but we can find out about some new products and um, maybe some new techniques and some new ideas on how to sew, piece, or quilt, etc. So Stay tuned for May 1st when I'm back. Okay, so to win today's um, giveaway, you had to answer the question, what's your favorite sewing and quilting website and give a reason why. And Paul has handed me the um, the winner, Laura, uh, Lori Nutta, N-U-T-A, from Tennessee is our winner today. Uh, Lori says her favorite website is Dime Designs for Machine Embroidery. They have so many videos that help teach details on embroidery and they have wonderful products uh, combined with your knowledge on needles. So it helped me complete my project. Well, thank you. Wow, Lori, that's a really nice testimonial. And I have to say um, Dime Designs, um, I, um, I adore them. Them, and um, they have great products and stabilizers, et cetera. And um, oh gosh, her name just, I can see her. Um, not Elaine. <laughs> oh, her name just escapes me. Um, but anyway, uh, we are friends with um, Dime Design. So wonderful. So Lori, to win your prize today, uh, I need a shipping address. So what are you going to do? Lori Nutta, N-U-T-A, you need to send me an email at info at smetsneedles.com info at smetsneedles.com on the subject line put um uh, smet snippet giveaway winner and i'll get the information and i'll be able to send out all these sewing goodies for you so it looks like it's still rainy maybe with a little bit of a few snowflakes so you know what it's a great day to sew. No matter where you are, I wish you a happy and healthy um, sewing day for each day of this beautiful month of April. Get out and enjoy some fresh air and share the love of sewing. I'll see you next month and uh, so long, everybody. Bye-bye. So smets.